Remember the popular anime from the series from the 60s, 70s, and 80s, such as Astro Boy, Space Battleship Yamato, Lupin the Third, Mobile Suit Gundam, Fist of the North Star, Dirty Pair, and Space Pirate Captain Harlock, right? Yeah, I know those titles. They are the most popular ones from Japan from the 60s and to the 80s. What about those other forgotten anime titles from the 60s, 70s, and 80s that we have completely forgotten about it? Until now, especially the ones that you haven't seen and heard of before, especially the ones you may have seen on YouTube online, whether it's in Japanese dub or if it's dubbed in Italian, especially the ones that were, <coughs> sorry, syndicate aided on the Italian TV broadcast channel Italia One in Italy during the 80s, especially the ones before popular anime such as. My Hero Academia, One Piece, Demon Slayer, and Dragon Ball Z. As a matter of fact, I wanted to discuss about the other titles of anime that everybody ha has, has never heard of, especially the ones that still existed to this day. Just before there was popular anime titles everybody knows nowadays, like the mainstream popular anime ones as well. Yeah... I wanted to discuss about something good for a change, like the popular anime from the 70, 60s, 70s, and 80s. Like the ones that everybody hasn't heard of, like the ones I wanted to talk in depth for the first time here. To make something good for a change, especially that we're forgotten about, which they still exist, what I come across as well. With said, there are 10 of these anime titles from the 60s and to the 80s, after the 70s, which they were originally premiered in Japan back in the day as well, but they were also syndicated on Italian TV broadcast channel called Italia One in Italy during the 80s, especially the popular ones that came out from the 60s to the 80s, especially the ones that were premiered in Japan. So here we go. With, it, with being said, number 10, Machine Hayabusa. This anime series premiered on August, April 2nd, 1976 until September 17th, 1976. This anime series has only lasted about 21 episodes, which this series came out in Japan in 1976. But then it was also syndicated on Italia One, which is an Italian network channel in the 70s which is in Italy around 1979, which it goes by the name Falco Il Super Bowli Day, translated as simply Falco the Super Racing Car, although in the Japanese version it has the Japanese theme song, Dash Machine Hayabusa, but performed by Ichiro Mizuki in the Japanese version. However, in the Italian dub version of the original anime, Machine Hayabusa has the Italian theme song, which it goes by the name Ken Falco, performed by Super Robots, my favorite music group from Italy. The anime series tells the story about a shady organization group, which they are called the Black Shadows, which they are always controlling the auto racing world, where they are used unscrupulous methods in every race, especially these types of ferocious machines, which they are driven, especially of how... Oh, this happens when the Sa Ionji team, led by Dr. Sionji, along with his five young men and a girl, have stand up to test the time bravely to get the fact of how they race after another, almost wanted to make money. However, the Sionji team, on the other hand, undergoes the severe training to defeat the evil organization, which it has a lot to do, especially of how they challenge the devil with the super efficient machine which is called the Falcon developed by Dr. Sionji himself. Although this was released on DVD in Italy by Yamato Video, it never got a DVD or, or Blu-ray release by Discotech Media. One of these days, Discotech Media would get a hold of this for a simple Blu-ray release as well. Number four, number nine, Candy Candy. This anime series is about the story of an orphan girl named Candy, also known as Candice, 
who is left outside the Pony's Home Orphanage in Lake Michigan, starting in the beginning of the 20th century on a snowy day in the winter. Especially her real name is Candace, written on a note aside, which is her name is basically Candace White after the snow is falling outside on a cold winter day. When Candace grows up during her days at the orphanage, comes by, and at this time, of course, this is where she watches her friends leave to be fostered by other families, where there are years for him, how things just go and how it progresses. When she helped by the mysterious stranger, which there are years for him to return to her, when she goes by and the day comes, she is sent to work as a servant for the Ragham family, and she is bullied by one of the Ragham children, Eliza and Neil, which they, and she develops crushes on many ice, nice young men, especially the charming gentleman Anthony Brown, until he died in a suddenly fox hunt. And, and then his cousin, Alistar Audrey, who is a potential suitor, he was killed in the First World War One, which happened during the First World War. So Candace, on the other hand, married a, has falls in love with a man named Terence Terry Granchester in London, which is in the United Kingdom, where those house set besides allow him to marry a woman whose need is greater than how it happened. Although many of these anime movies, like the Candy Candy anime movies, like these two came out in the 70s, and also in there is a Candy Candy anime movie, which was released on April 25th, 1992. Although it never got a DVD release, this anime series was originally premiered on TV Asahi on October 1st, 1976, but it was in the 70s in Japan, but it was also syndicated on Canale 5 in Italy on March 2nd, 1980, which it has the Italian theme song um, by Rocking Horse, although this anime is popular in Mexico also as well. Number 8, Hello Spank. The anime series is based on the manga by Shinichi Yu Yukimuro. Hello Spank is an anime series that premiered on March 7, 1981 on TV Asahi in Japan, but it's syndicated on Italia 1 in 1982 in, during the 80s. Although this anime was never aired in America, the anime tells a story about a teenage Aki Aiko Morimura's father disappeared on his yacht, so her mother gets a lap a creative hat designing job in Paris. Instead of going with her, she when Aiko stays with her uncle and his dog Pappy, which is the predictable Japanese patho, panthos, when pa, Pappy was killed in a tragic road accident, before the arrival of the new dog named Spank brings a smile to Aiko's face, even though if Spank is constantly getting her and her friends into trouble as it goes. Although this anime series only lasted about 30, 63 episodes, which is originally aired between March 7th, 1981 until March 29th, 1982, around the same time as Yurisei Yatsura, although this was also popular in Germany, which is, goes by the name Hollow Kurt. The only difference is the characters speak and how they talk, especially of how in the, the Italian dub version and the anime, but in the German version, they bark and meow, which is the exact opposite in the same exact same thing as well, from what I understand. Especially in the Italian dub version. Especially there's some... When it was first broadcast, there were some subject changes of how the dialogue has been changed. Every name's adapted and some of the scenes were cut until 2011. Especially those changes were removed on the next broadcast on another channel in Italy called Manga. Any mention about Forgotten Anime, although this never gotten a DVD release or Blu-ray release here in America, we'll leave it up to Discotheque Media to release Hello Spank for a complete series Blu-ray release, especially when it, and it'll have a Blu-ray release at, in the works. Number seven, Brave Rideen. The anime series tells the story about after a slumber of 12 millennia, the demon empire returns to seize control of the earth, plotting evil of how from its secret volcanic beasts, from which is high priest regularly since the fearsome fossils beast to attack humanity when Rydeen, 
which is the giant robot-like protector of the lost continent of the MU, of how it senses the evil presence awakens on its golden pyramid, revealing to a young Japanese boy named Akira Hibiki that he is the only one descendant of the ancient MU people who must help Raiden save the Earth. When he can call Raiden whenever he rides needs him on his ro rider, er, er, Sparker motorcycle into the robot, chest where it can be stored during the missions of how it goes. When the Demon Empire seeks control of the Motoron, the powerful element that allows the robot Raiden to self-repair of how it's hideaway when a Akira also assistance of his friends, especially token girl named Mari Sakirada, who is the daughter of the scientist fighting the Demon Empire, and the severe several members of the high school team super with the suspicious echoes of the Battle of the Planets or Gachaman in a certain way of how this goes. Although this anime series lasted about 50 episodes originally from April 4th, 1975 until March 26, 1976, which the, some of the ep 26 episodes were directed by Yoshiyoki Tomino, who is the work creator for the original Mobile Suit Gundam series on there. However, episodes 27 to 50 were directed by Tadao Nagahama, who is known for The Rose of Versailles and Ulysses 31. This series is basically seen of its predecessor to the romantic trilogy consisting to other animes such as Combattler v. Voltus V and Toshio, Tosho Deimos. This anime series never got an official Blu-ray release in America, but Discotech Media will get a release of this. And also, the, the design of Raiden was later used in a low-budget Korean animated movie called Space Thunder Kids, which is a how they use the same design of Raiden from the Brave Raiden anime, always used in Space Thunder Kids, as how do they do this? That is the tricky question, though, as well. Well, that's just how it is, as well. And, yeah, although this anime series came out in the 70s in Japan, but it was also syndicated on manga on March 18th, 2020 in Italy during the COVID-19 pandemic. Probably of how this anime how is premiered as well, which is getting big in Italy when it comes to forgotten anime titles that everybody has completely forgotten about as well. Number six, Scarlet Sanshiro. This anime series is based on the manga of the same name by Tatsuo Yoshida. This anime series lasted about 26 episodes from April 2nd, 1969 until September 24th, 1969, when it was originally premiered on Fuji Television in, in, in J Japan during the late 60s, but the anime series is also syndicated in the early 80s in Italy on Tele Monte Carlo. The anime tells the story about Saburo's father, who is a martial artist who dies in the fight with the mysterious man in the city gates of how this happens of nothing how it's gotten well which is not in a good way when the boys set around search of his father as a killer for revenge with only one clue when the killer left his glass on the scene of the crime which it all humble, humbles in his prime so he needs to fight a lot of how who, the people before he has finally reaches the end of his faithful canine companion named Stupid a run mill of adventure, a series of combat against the mutants and mummies of how the series progresses. The anime series is animated by the company Tatsunoko Production, which is known for the Speed Racer series and also Gotcha Man. The anime series Scarlet Sanshiro goes by the name Ju Judo Boy, which it goes in the Japanese title pun name as well, of no pun intended as how. Well, depending on what other name just goes. This anime series came out in the late 60s and early 70s when it comes to forgotten anime. Although it never got a DVD or Blu-ray release here in America, but Discotech Media w would ha get a hold of this for a proper Blu-ray release in standard definition quality. Same goes for the Italian edition by Yamato Video on DVD in Italy, uh, in Blu-ray, which it, it'll be in Italy, especially for this classic an an for a forgotten anime which still existed to this day. Number five, Golden Bat. 
another forgotten anime series from the 60s, which it goes by Fantoma in Brazil, Phantasmagorico in Mexico, and in Italy, it's famously known as Phantaman. The anime series only lasted about 52 episodes from its original run from eight, the 1st of April, 1967 until March 23rd, 1968, when this series was originally aired on Nippon TV in Japan in the 60s, but it was also syndicated on in 1981 on Antenna 3 in Italy during the 80s, which is earlier 1981. The anime tells the story about Golden Bat, who is the warrior who looks like a golden skeleton, which is a cross between Skeletor from He-Man and Spawn, who is sent from the ancient Atlantis to protect the people of our own time whenever he appears in his presence. How he's been requested by the girl named Mari, who is along with her associates, Professor Yamatone, and the schoolboy named Takeru. Things just go on how it, this happens of how they're going to fight against uh, attacking the robots and monsters, including the evil Dr. Nazo. The anime series has never made it popular in America because this anime has never been aired in America. But this is your typical anime series that has been popular in Mexico and Italy in the 80s, of how this made a popularity, because it has the Italian theme song, Phantom Man, by Superman, performed by Super Robots, which opens the Italian dub version of the anime, Golden Bat. It never got an official deep Blu-ray release here in America yet, but pretty soon Discotech Media would get a hold of this, which is in their works. Same with Yamato Video for a DVD and Blu-ray release in a good quality definition as well, which we can only imagine. If you have never seen Golden Bat, give it a watch, because it's on YouTube, it's dubbed in Italian. Feel free to check it out. Because it's been a while since I saw the anime dubbed in Italian. It's pretty much... It's, it's popular. The anime is popular in Italy. That's why. Number four. Emmy, Magical Lemmy, the Magic Star. The anime series is based on the three-volume manga of the same name by Kyoko Arai. This anime series has originally aired from January 27th. 1985 and Febu until February 28, 1986. This was animated by Studio Piero, which is known for the work on anime, like Yurisei Yatsura, The Mysterious Cities of Gold, Magical Angel Creamy Mommy, Pastel Yumi, The Magic Idol, Kim Agure, Orange Road, Fushigi Yugi, The Mysterious Play, and Yu Yu Hakusho. This anime series tells a story about how the would-be conjurer named Mai Kazuki, who was playing with her brother named Misaki, until it wasn't long when the fairy Topo offers to grant her a wish, when then transforms herself into magical Lemmy of how this, in a way, magical girl tradition of creamy mommy in its way, for the most part of the anime, to how it's considerate of how mundane, of how it concerns then her crime-finding sisters, of how things going quite as it seems, as much of her Emmy's plot Emmy's plot concerns on her performances at her grandmother's magic carrot theater. By this time, Mai loses her powers. She leaves her childhood behind, and she becomes an adult in the final episodes of this anime. Although this anime is your typical magical girl anime series from the that came out in the eighties. Um, there, which is right next to Persia, the Magic Fairy, Magical Angel, Creamy Mommy, and Pastel Yumi, which is part of Studio Piero's Magical Girl anime saga, though. Especially of how they have appeared in crossovers as well. Although it never got an official DVD release in Amer or Blu-ray release in America, Discotech Media would get a hold of this one of these days. If you haven't ever seen this anime, give it a watch, because it's been a while since I saw this on YouTube, though. It's dubbed in Italian. Well, what can you do? Because at least the anime is popular in Italy, though. Because that's the thing, though. Number three, Lady Georgie. The anime series is based on the manga of the same name by Yumiko Igarashi, who is the creator of Candy Candy. This has adapted to an anime series that lasted about... 45 episodes 
which was originally aired on TV Asahi in Japan, but it was also syndicated in Italia 1 in Italy during the 80s. And it's also syndicated in Telecinco in Spain during the 90s. The anime tells a story about how it takes the setting of the Australian forest. The Bornman family find a, a so dying women who begs them, uh, begs them to take care of their newborn daughter named Georgie. What's going to disappoint of how the opposition of Miss Borman, the father of the green and the girl has ra is raised on their own of how there's no mentioning of her true parents when her father was a British convict. So Mr. Borman dies rescuing Georgie from a river because he had to save her life when his two sons named Abel and Arthur keep their promise to look after her when they're both falling in love with her themselves. When she falls in love with an English nobleman named Dowell Gray, so Abel confuses her his feelings to the mother, who fury blunts out. Georgie's true origins, so Georgie goes to England so she can find her birth father and the rival to Dowell to dump his fiance Elise, who is the daughter of the the powerful Duke Ducklin, Dunklin, with the little evidence but the Braves of how this is not exactly of how but to lead to the Sultan men memento of her real mother when she eventually tracks down her father who is n not uh, of course not exactly a comfort uh, but the noble er Earl Gerald meanwhile of how, how the evil Dunklin has captured Arthur who followed Georgie to England and accidentally witnesses Duke's drug smuggling operation when Arthur dies from the drugs fed to him by one of Dunklin's men. When Abel is thrown into the dungeons in the Tower of London, killing one of the relatives. Although this anime has never gotten an official DVD release or Blu-ray in America, Discotech would get a hold of this someday. Number two, Hana no Ko Lun Lun. The anime series is tell has originally run from February 9th, 1979 until February 8th, 1980, which is another Magical Girl anime that came out in Japan in the late 70s and early 80s time period in Japan. But it was also syndicated when yeah, it, when it was on TV Asahi in Japan in the 80s, 70s. But it was also syndicated on Telereporter in Italy. But it was also syndicated in Italy in on Telereporter in 1981 during the 80s with the theme song Lulu performed by Rocking Horse. And it's also syndicated on Televisia Canal 5 on, in Mexico. The anime series tells a story about Lun Lun, who is the 12-year-old girl of the flower seller from the French countryside, Novo, Novo, her talking dog, and a cat named Cato, who are the emissaries from the king of the floral planet Flowerin. The bad queen named Robin India, who has seized control of the kingdom, and sent her servant Yaboki just to seize the seven colors of the magical flowers of how on earth when Lun Lun can transform into a girl with special powers with a flower key, must travel around the world with Navo and Kato to collect the plants before Yaboki. Although it did got an English dub by ZIV International, by Media Home Entertainment and Family Home Entertainment, they wanted to. And it's also available in the Fairy Tale Adventures compilation DVD of the anime, especially for this anime. Also, Harmony Gold, which is known for their work on Robotech, they wanted to edited the movies for the condensed movie cut version of. And especially when they wanted to change the name as well. When ZIV International acquired the rights to Harmony Gold as well, when they wanted to edit it as a movie, but it was never released in America, but only released on VHSs in the United Kingdom. Never got, again, never got official DVD release, but Discotech Media will get a hold of a standard definition Blu ray release of this classic anime. Yeah, this anime, Hana no Ko Lun Lun, is one of the earliest Magical Girl anime titles from the 70s. More different than Marvelous Melmo and Cutie Honey, just before Sailor Moon arrived in the 90s. And same with Cardcaptor Sakura. 
Hanonoko Lunlun, on the other hand, is the greatest example of magical girl anime that came out in the 70s in Japan, and that's one of them. Number one, Harris's Wind. This anime is based on the manga of the same name by Tetsuya Chiba, which is serialized in Weekly Shonen Magazine, adapted to an anime series that only lasted about 70 episodes from May 5th, 1966 until August 31st, 1967. But it's only originally premiered on Fuji TV in Japan during the, seven, the 60s, but it never got syndications in overseas in the continent. And again, another anime series that has never aired in America. The anime tells the story about Kanematsu Ishida, who is the regular wild child who is always throws out of every school in his area for fighting as he wanted to do. When he met the, the principal of the Harris Academy, where he is drifts from the club to his trying his hand in sports, mainly contacts sports like boxing and kendo, when he had a lot to do for this coming through, he also embraces hands when eventually the hero of the school, when he had channeled his aggression into how he is improving the school's athletic reputation. Yeah, this another anime series has never gotten official DVD release here in, or Blu-ray here in America. And again, never got syndicated on Italia 1 during the 80s in Italy, though. But this anime, like Harris's Wind, was the only anime series only aired in Japan during the 60s, though. I mean, that's what for... It's the great examples of anime titles that you've forgotten about, which are the primaries of how you want to understand of how you would like to see this one, if you have never seen one before. I don't know if you can look, and this is the stuff, something that Wikipedia doesn't even even know about for this anime, though. And I don't know if you can find any lost media parts of forgotten, ten of these forgotten anime titles that came out in the 60s, 70s, and 80s, though. I mean, take it up to Discotech Media for the job to get a hold of Harris's Wind anime to get a proper English translation on the subtitles and the original Japanese dub also. Yeah, take it up for the job, though, wasn't it? Speaking of which, though, this is your main primary examples I have on there. Because I have finally picked about ten of these anime titles that you have forgotten about. Especially the ones from the 60s, 70s, and 80s that are n n the ones that everybody hasn't heard about. Oh, no, no, not the regular one, not the popular ones that everybody knows about, but I'm talking about the stuff that is infamous. The ones that are never got syndicated in here, but only aired in Japan on there, or there's, or even get syndicated on Italian network channels in Italy during the 80s, and also in Televisia Canal 5 in Mexico also, and Telecinco in Spain also especially those syndications for these for types of forgotten anime, though. That's just my opinion, though, from what I understand. Because especially these titles on here, from what I want to know, needless to say, though, is that I, there's, there's a lot of them, though. And, and that's how you want to expect of how there are the types of forgotten anime, though, as opposed to quite different, though, more different than forgotten cartoons that everybody has completely forgot about. There's also forgotten anime from the 60s, 70s, and 80s that everybody has completely forgotten about. Well, that'll help you, There's because I had to pick ten of them just to help you understand, though, of how I'm given in the point though is that you want to expect for talking about forgotten anime on there as well. So that's going to be it for my video here on on forgotten anime titles from the 60s, 70s and 80s here on Anime Retrospect for today you guys. Thank you for watching but before we go, here's what I'm going to say for this one. Well, this is the first time because I'm, I'm doing it as like a little countdown from 10 all the way to 1 on forgotten anime titles that 
that are the ones that still exist to this day, though. Because, well, why not? Because that'll help you get the job, though, of how you want to expect for a title like Forgotten Anime, though. Because, well, why not? Because there is a lot of them out. There's a whole bunch of anime titles that you've forgotten about, especially the ones that still existed to this day, though, from what I understand as well. Just so, from the looks, is how it works. I mean, it is so different than pop than the mainstream anime out there before. I mean, it's a very of what you want to expect of how you want to research in addition to the lost media as well accordingly especially I have a long history of getting into the lost media though as well well because that's the thing it's not like you're watching Space Thunder Kids or Defenders of Space no that's not what I'm talking about no I'm talking about how I mentioned about 10 of these anime titles that are the great examples of forgotten anime from the 60s, 70s, and 80s. Like, the ones that are infamous, that still, that anybody hasn't known about, uh, and that still exist to this day. Like, if you want to find those like that, highly recommend you to watch those on YouTube. Especially if you watch it either in its Spanish dub, or if you watch it in its original Japanese with English subtitles, or you can watch it in Italian dub on there, because they put like the Italian theme songs of how, which in between the Japanese opening to the original anime, which you can see the Japanese lyrics in their subtitles, but the the Italian theme song plays on there, because you know the ones that were that you see on. Italia 1, Tele Monte Carlo, it's uh, media set channels as well. Those are the, the biggest examples of how I'm giving you the point. That's just my opinion, though. Well, because I wanted to discuss about Forgotten Anime for the first time, though. Just to let you know, that's something that Discotech Media needs to get a hold of this as well. And these are the ones that Wikipedia has useless as usual, but giving in the th facts of how you're learning about the lost media, if you can find and research as well, if you want to talk about forgotten anime, that's a lot of it, and it's perfect ways of how you want to learn about this thing, especially when you're anal trying to go in depth as well, because. These are the ones that still existed to this day, though, as well. Yeah, even though if you watch an anime dubbed in Italian, even though I, if you could understand what they're saying if you're watching it in its Italian, especially if, when it's on Italia 1 or the channel called Manga, which I think it's another Italian network channel where they used to air anime, but it got defunct as well, as from what I this day though as well, from what I understand. Hope subscribe for content and anime plan. Link in the description below. You share this video on your Twitter, Facebook if you have Twitter, Facebook account, and all social media. Smack the like button if you enjoy this video. Feel free to leave in the comments in the comment section below in this video if you like as well. Smack the notifications bell button and be sure to get notified as well. Be sure to subscribe to my channel, Ruroni K95. Feel free to join my channel, especially if you're new to my channel as a newcomer. And also, feel free to leave in the comments in the comments section below in this video if you like. And what is your thoughts on Forgotten Anime in the comments below? Let me know, and I will let you tell you about this as well. And also, keep it otaku for this video, because this is a brand new video edition here on Anime Retrospect. This is Ruroni K95 saying thank you for watching my video, and I'm glad you liked it. I hope you enjoyed it. hope to see you soon for the next video. hope you have a great day. This is Ruroni K95 signing off. Thank you for watching this video. And I have another anime to cover for a re-review in the works. Until next time.